Hi, this is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts, back with another word from the Lord. This will be a reading of a few verses, and it will be followed by Pat Love's Two Cents. Okay, here we go. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. 10. That's it. We're stopping right there. Listen, you guys. When God says God is not mocked, he's saying, I ain't no fool. <laughs> I see what's happening. I know. There's, there's an old expression the old saints used to say, God sees and he knows. Um, what God is trying to explain, and I'm going to make this real quick because I believe I've, I've made the point in the other verses, but I was led to read this, so I'm going to go on, is there comes a time of reckoning. Now, God will sometimes turn a blind eye for a while because we're in the dispensation of grace and we are in Christ Jesus. However, there comes a point where God draws a line. So what you have to realize is, like the pastor preached at church this morning, Pastor uh, Joe Valerie, he preached that there are consequences to our sins, to our choices in life, good ones and bad ones. Now, for our sins, there are bad consequences. For living righteous, there are good consequences. And God does require us to live a holy life. For some of you who don't believe that, it is true. That's what the word says. Now, I all I did was quote the scriptures and share to enlighten. But I'm telling you, you will not win God's favor living a diametrically opposed lifestyle to God's ways. And the one thing I want to go on the other side of that. Now, we know that when we sow to our flesh, we... You know, we do reap corruption. You cuss somebody out, they're liable to sock you in your face. I knew a man who had an argument at a bar. They argued all the way outside the bar and got to throwing blows. And the guy decided, okay, you're going to, you know, front me off like that. I'm going to end this. And he pulled out his gun and shot the boy. And I, I believe he died. And I watched that happen at a bar when I was unsaved. Man came in starting some mess, and the man he started the mess with ended the argument with one blow. And the man laid there and died from a shotgun wound over a 25-cent pool table game. Consequences. Reaping corruption. Listen, you guys. Some of you little young girls are running around here with your skirts up to your navel, bearing it all, getting on YouTube, showing your boobs, or just about showing them, wanting all the attention that you really should not have. And then when you get the attention that you think you want, what do you end up with? A belly full of baby. Wah, wah. Yeah and an 18-year or longer jail sentence with diapers and bottles and no, I can't go to the movies because my baby's sick and uh, no, my parents won't babysit, so no, I can't go to the party with you guys because I got to take care of my baby. Ain't no boy around. He was there for them boobs. He was there for that, you know, for them goodies you had between them legs. But now that you're all used up and, and, and you know, you're messed up with a consequence, he is nowhere to be found. 
That is a perfect example of flesh reaping corruption. I know a young man who had to do time in a prison. And he kept getting calls. And the calls were private calls because they wanted him to go and have, uh, let me see, what did they call it? Sexually transmitted disease, STD test to see if he had picked up AIDS or to see if he was carrying AIDS and distributing them, I mean distributing the, the AIDS to his sexual partners. Consequences. There's a man I know called to the ministry. Called. I mean, it witnessed in my spirit. It witnessed in one of the other ladies' spirits. We both said the same thing. That boy should be in a pulpit. Man's in prison. Man contracted AIDS. As a result, the God gave him time now to get his life right. Showed him all kind of mercy, did all kind of miracles in his life, even to the point of him being pulled over by police with a $4,000 warrant for his arrest. And they didn't arrest him. They thought it was because they didn't want to deal with the rain, but we knew it was because we prayed. Now, how many times do you see that happen? But Brother Man didn't get his act together. And as a result, he ended up with AIDS and boom. Back in prison. Consequences. Listen, you guys. Those of you who feel like, what is the point of living in the spirit? I'm tired of waiting. God doesn't move fast enough. I want what I want, and I want it now. Don't be weary in well-doing. Okay? Okay? For in due season, you will reap if you faint not. Don't faint. Don't get offended in the church and walk away. Don't carry unforgiveness in your heart because of something that was done in the flesh. And you don't want to get in the spirit. You want to deal with the flesh in your flesh. So you decide to be an unforgiving soul. And then there's a root of bitterness that springs up in you. And before you know it, many there, many thereby be defiled. Because your attitude's so foul, you're fouling up everything around you. Because you won't forgive and get that mess up out of you. Listen, listen. One time... I did prison ministry for years. And a lady witnessed that, that scripture. She quoted it to me because I was crying on the phone. I called her and I said, I don't think I'm going to do prison ministry anymore. And she said, why? And I told her because I was tired of the chaplain treating me like I was a criminal treating me like I was in there dealing dope. I didn't know what the deal was. But you talk about persecution. That chaplain persecuted my behind from day one to the day that she quit. And this lady told me one thing. She said, Pat, she asked me a question. Who are you serving, God or man? Well, of course I'm serving God. And you feel called to prison ministry. Yes, I do. That's my outreach call. Okay? Serve God. And then she said this. Don't be weary. <laughs> I'm not going to cry. I refuse. Really ministered to me when she said it. I'll never, never forget that. She said, don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap if you faint not. And I want to tell you, I continued on that word to do prison ministry until I had to take care of my husband. And the chaplain uh, 
made a few moves to dismiss me out of the whole group, conveniently, in an underhanded way. And two years later, when my assignment was up with my husband dealing with certain family issues, the Lord released me to go back to prison ministry and because uh, everything is settled down at home. It wasn't about him and me. We, we got along great. <laughs> but it was personal family issues outside of us. And I had to be there for my husband for support. And God used that chaplain to dismiss me so I would be free to deal with my husband and his issues, you know, with his family. Well, after the two years were up, another chaplain who had replaced her called me up and asked me if I wanted to come back. She could get me in through the back door. <laughs> and that's what she did. And I continued to do prison ministry until I had to start taking care of my husband and God assigned me to a church, to pastor a church. So I'm saying this to say to you that whatever you do for God, oh, baby, there are blessings in that. But when you want to play with your flesh, there are consequences. There's a payday. There's a street expression we used to use when I was unsaved. And I may get it wrong. So for those of you who hear me get it wrong, don't laugh too bad. Just understand I haven't been out there for a long time. And uh, it's something like, you know, don't write no check your behind can't cover. So watch what you want to do in your flesh, you guys. You don't want God to hand you a bill that you can't pay because he will take it out of you one way or another. There is that side of God that is spelled W-R-A-T-H, wrath. I always say this, you don't want to get on his bad side. Stay on his good side. Don't get on his bad side. That is not a part of God you ever, ever want to run into? I don't think so. God bless you. I'm going to leave you with that. But whatever you do, remember, don't be weary in well-doing. In due season, you will reap. You may feel like a fool when things are going wrong and you want to just pull the plug and say, I quit this crap. I don't have to deal with these church people. I don't have to deal with that pastor. I'm tired of that choir director. I'm tired of that usher uh, uh, president. I'm tired of the women's fellowship and the men's fellowship. Those people get on my nerves. And that old senior old lady that's always on my case, she needs to mind her own doggone business. I'm sick of her getting all in my business, asking me how me and the Lord do it. Ain't none of her business. And I'm going to tell her next time she, you know, what? Don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap if you faint not. Do good. Do good. Be willing and obedient. Please. There are benefits, fringe benefits you don't even know when your back is up against that wall. Now, you may not see the benefits. Remember it said, in due season we shall reap. There are fringe benefits. And there are times when your back gets up against that wall, God will say, ah, oh, I got something up under my sleeve for you. Here's your blessing. Here's your miracle. Because God remembers what we've forgotten. All the years of service, all the, the, the times when we could have done wrong, but we chose to do right. Hmm. God remembers all that. Your labor of love is never in vain with God. He doesn't lose count. Do you hear me? And he is merciful. He is long-suffering. But don't play him for no patsy now. You don't want to get on his bad side. I'm trying to tell you. Stay on his good side and reap the benefits of walking with God. Don't don't stack up the cards against your favor. Don't sabotage your destiny with the flesh. Don't let the, the things of the flesh, the things of this world living in darkness, don't let all that 
take you under. It's not worth it. A nut is not worth it. A high is not worth it. No man or woman is worth it. Not even a dollar bill, baby. None of that is worth you going through hell, either here on earth or in eternity. None of it is worth that. Reap the benefits that God has. Reap them. But you got to sow to the Spirit. You hear me? Okay. Mommy's done fussing now. God bless you.